I talked to people that was in the room when Brett Favre went to the Hall of Fame and nobody mentioned about text messages that he sent to that jet masseuse. Mm. Nobody mentioned anything about the addiction that he suffered from. But yeah. yet, T.O., they brought up everything. Can you imagine if T.O. would have had an incident, incidents like Brett Favre off the field? T.O. still, to this day right now, would not be in the Hall of Fame. Yet, they walked right past it like Brett Favre did nothing. That is true. I the, give you that. The problem that I have with this situation, yep. you got to be a sorry mofo mm. to steal from the lowest. Mississippi is the poorest state in our country. It is. It's citizens. So if they're the poorest state, Brett Favre is taken from the underserved. You made a hundred plus million dollars in the NFL. This is what we know. Scared when black and brown people do do fraud the government, they do they hell bit. Mm -hmm. You get an EBT card and you get wick and you get stuff like that, boy, they move heaven and earth to try to put you in jail for four hundred little measly dollars. Fact. Now this man done took a million dollars. Yep. And they sitting around like, well, well, you know, it, it happened and we'll see. And they're gonna get more money and do it all over again. The biggest criminals, the people that steal the most, look like that. But he's been a sleazeball. He's been shady for a very, very long time. None of what Shannon Sharp just said is false. None. He is right about T.O. That when they start to look at you, now they're not supposed to look at you off the field. You know, it's a myopic view of a player, a player, not a person. So Shannon knows that, that you shouldn't be looking, you know, was T.O. a good teammate? Now that's the argument. And I think that's what was held against him. Longtime sports media man Dan Patrick agreed with Sharp. These are the students from the graduating class at Seattle Pacific University. The pride flags are being handed to the school's interim president, Pete Menharis. This is what solidarity looks like against bigoted school administrators. Menharis is one of many in this case. He is not alone. But the act of these students is commendable and fearless. Instead of shaking his hand, the students gave another send-off. It was flat-out joyous to watch, and frankly, I am confident the young people in this country are going to lead us to better days. LBGT community gets a right. They're not taking a right from you. They're saying, we just want some of the rights that you have. Blacks saying, we want some of the rights you have. Women says, we want some of the rights you have. We're not taking any of the, your rights away. We just want some of those rights that you've been given because you've been a white male. The one man that's never really had to fight for anything. A white man in America has never had an amendment that says you can't go here or you can't do that. So we got to pass this legislation so you can. FS1's Shannon Sharp spoke on the issue as well. Every other minority has had to have amendments and legislation in place so they could get certain things that the white man has been afforded for 400 years. That is a fact. I'm gonna take something that they gave, they give animals, livestock, for <laughs> parasites. I'm gonna take that for COVID because you said it doesn't work. Here's the protocol I went through. Here's the research behind it. Gave them 500 pages of research from a number of people that put together uh, case-reviewed studies around homeopathy. Just let it go, Aaron. Nobody was talking about this, but this is his way of saying, so? Woke mob, cancel culture, y'all can't... Well, ain't nobody trying to cancel you. But ain't nobody trying to take no medical advice from you either. I realize I'm in the crosshairs of the woke mob right now. So before my final nail gets put in my cancel culture uh, casket, I like to speak the truth. And I'm not a part of this, uh, you know, uh, woke uh, cancel culture. The man who plays victim, Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers. A man who will not accept and own up to the falsehoods he spews is getting called out for it. So he goes back to his soulmate on this issue, Joe Rogan. Yeah. And on Joe's podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, he knows he's going to get nothing but softballs lobbed up. From who else? Then Skip Bayless and FS1 co-host Shannon Sharp. At my business, the, right. the report repertorial business, as in I thought they might follow up and I was ready to expand on my process if they followed up, but they didn't follow up. So he's sort of blaming the media for not asking the next question, the next question. And I had come to the conclusion, I'm going to say I've been immunized. And if there's a follow-up, then talk about my process. But thought there's a possibility that I say I'm immunized. Maybe they understand what that means. Maybe they don't. Maybe they follow up. They didn't follow up. Well, he, he's not even wearing a mask. So everybody, when he said immunized, they thought he was just trying to be the smartest guy in the room exactly. by using the term a, that a, a term that that would be high minded that, right. that would that would transcend yeah. the term vaccinated. I'm immunized. Yeah. And 
yeah, everybody's going to sort of take him at his word and let's go to the next one. Yeah. Because you know what? Nobody was expecting you to be what you became. 